In this module, we're going to talk about the duplicate operation inside of Retrospect. Duplicate is used as a way to copy the data from one disk to another disk in the original Windows format. When you do a traditional backup, the data will be stored in a custom Retrospect format that uses Retrospect or requires Retrospect in order to recover the files, whereas Duplicate will allow you to copy the data and retain that original format so you can do a drag and drop to another location at a later date. A lot of times duplicate is used if you want to copy data from a network drive to a local drive. Retrospect tends to be a little bit more reliable when copying data over the network because it has a verification process that the Windows operating system does not provide you with. So to demonstrate duplicate, what you do is you choose duplicate on the left side of the main retrospect window, and you go to source. In this case, our source is going to be a folder on my hard drive. Now I could choose the C drive if I want to duplicate that, but for time we're going to go ahead and choose the Dell folder. Then we go to destination, and then we have to pick where do we want to copy the files. Now if I were to select a specific disk as my destination, Retrospect will replace the contents of that disk with the contents of the source. So in this case it's warning us at the top, do we really want to replace all contents of that drive? Well, I don't really want to replace the contents of any drive. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose my C drive, or it could be the E drive, or it could even be a drive on the network. And I'm going to choose subvolume, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder, and I'm going to call it my copy. And I'm going to define that folder as a subvolume. And then I go ahead and I click OK. Retrospect warns me, do I really want to replace the contents of my copy on local C. Well that folder is empty so I know it's safe to replace it. So I'm going to click replace, then I'm going to go to files chosen. This is where Retrospect will show me what files are actually going to be copied. And if I control click on the plus it will expand it and show me everything that's in there. In this case we're going to go ahead and just click OK. And then we look at the summary. We've selected 172 files, we're replacing zero files, space needed, and the amount that needs to be copied. So we're going to go ahead and say duplicate, and then Retrospect gives us one final warning, because this can be a dangerous operation. If you've chosen the wrong disk, it will replace the contents of the disk with the contents of the source. And that can be very, very fast, and you can't stop it once you begin. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. and then Retrospect will begin to copy the data. After the data has been copied from one disk to another disk or one folder to another folder, Retrospect will do a byte-by-byte -byte comparison to make sure the files were correctly copied during the operation. This has a lot of advantages over the Windows copying through a drag and drop because it does make sure your file integrity has been maintained. So in this example, Retrospect has begun the compare phase, and in just a moment it'll complete. Now one of the other advantages of using the duplicate operation is it's actually an incremental duplicate. Once files have been copied, the next time I perform a duplicate, Retrospect will not need to copy that data again. So before we go and look at how the duplicate actually works, let's look at the drive. So if I minimize Retrospect and I close these folders, We can go ahead and we can open up the C drive, and on the C drive is the folder called My Copy, and inside there is an identical version of the Dell folder that we saw earlier. So let's go ahead and return to Retrospect, and let's go ahead and choose Duplicate again, and it remembered what we did last time. We copied our Dell folder to the My Copy folder, and if I go to Files Chosen, you'll notice that there are diamonds next to all of the files and folders in the list. The diamond means that there's an identical version of that item on the drive, and Retrospect does not need to copy it again. So when we close the files, tr the preview window, what we see is that we've selected 172 files, zero files are going to be replaced, and 172 files have already been copied, need to copy zero files. So that gives us a lot of power, because if I were to add one item to this Dell folder, then it will only need to copy that one item. So in this example, we're going to go ahead and try that. 
I've gone ahead and added an additional file to that folder. So we're going to cancel this and ask Retrospect to look at the folder again. So we're going to go to Duplicate, and we're going to go to Files Chosen. It's going to scan the folder, and you'll notice that there's a new file there called My Extra File, and there is no diamond next to it. That means that file has not been copied yet. So I click OK, and now next to Files Chosen, it tells me that I need to copy one file. And that process will be fairly fast, and it won't need to replace any other files on the f out of that folder, or recopy any other files in the folder. So once the file has been copied, then when we go to look at the duplicate again, and we look at Files Chosen, that extra file now shows a diamond because we copied it during the last operation. So we can see that duplicating files is an incremental process that can be fairly fast once your initial copying has been completed. Now, if I were to add an additional item to the destination folder, Retrospect would actually need to replace it because it doesn't exist in the source folder. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. I've gone ahead and added an additional file to that folder. So if we close the duplicate window and we click duplicate again and we go to files chosen there's an additional file in the destination folder that does not exist in the source folder so retrospect is reporting that there's one file that needs to be replaced and zero files need to be copied so what will happen in this situation is retrospect will delete the file that is not supposed to be on the destination and will in the end it will make it identical to the source folder or the del folder now I can do one other thing. I can go over here to the destination window and I can change this pop-up menu from replace entire volume to replace corresponding files. Now when I do that, Retrospect will leave any extra files alone, leaving them there. So even though there's a file in the destination folder that does not exist on the source, replace corresponding will ignore it. It's an extra file it's going to restore around it and not replace it. The only time I would replace it is when I use the replace entire volume option. The advantage of this is that if I'm doing a duplicate every day on a schedule and I've deleted a file off my hard drive and didn't notice it from t for two or three days, using the replacing all contents, the only copy I have may get replaced because it's going to be deleted from that destination folder. If I were to use the Replace Corresponding option, then if a file got deleted from the source by accident, it's going to remain in the destination for an extended period of time until you physically remo remove it yourself. One important note when doing a duplicate is that a duplicate is different than file synchronization. When you do a file synchronization with other products, it looks at the source and it looks at the destination and it merges the most recent versions in both locations. When you are doing a duplicate with Retrospect, it's one direction only. It copies from the source and it writes to the destination. And if there's an item in the destination that isn't supposed to be there, it's going to be replaced. And if there's an item on the source that is older than a file on the destination, it also will get replaced. Retrospect does not discriminate about whether a file is older or newer, just that a file is different. And so there is a chance that a file could get replaced if you've modified a file on the destination by mistake. So ultimately, you want to maintain your source as your working area and your destination as your copy or your backup area. And you don't want to add extra things to that folder if you don't need to. Now, if you have a destination hard drive and you want to use that destination hard drive for things other than just a retrospect duplicate, then always use a folder as the destination. Anything else that exists on that destination drive will be left alone, and retrospect will only access the data inside that destination folder. It'll leave the root of that hard drive alone and any other contents of the root of that hard drive alone. So when you decide whether you want to do a backup versus a duplicate, there are a couple things to keep in mind. When you're doing a backup, the data is retained in a retrospect format. It allows you to use data compression. It also allows you to retain older versions of the files so that you can access something that may have been modified or changed throughout the life of 
span of that file. Whereas a duplicate replaces the old versions with the newer versions and does not retain any type of history. The advantage of the duplicate is that you can access the files on the destination without using any type of backup software to recover those files. Now, if your ultimate goal is to do a disaster recovery, you want to make a copy of the registry, you want to make sure that the machine is available to be restored in the event of a crash, then we typically will recommend using a backup and not a duplicate operation. Although duplicate can copy your registry, it's much better if you do a backup so that you can retain your drive as it was at the time of the specific backup or a specific point in time.